you are about to witness my finest hour. Garfield, you are a genius. Ah, customers. Oh, Brad, this is perfect. I love it. Just think, Mona, a little paint and some wallpaper and we can move right in. A little what? It's a long story. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. Friends are there. To help you get started, to give you a push on your way. Friends are there. To turn you around, get your feet on the ground for a brand new day. They'll pick you up when you're down. Help you swallow your pride when something inside's got to break on through to the other side. Friends are someone you can open up to When you feel like you're ready to flip When you've got the world on your shoulder Friends are there to give you a tip Friends are there when you need them They're even there when you want For a walk in the park, for a shot in the dark Friends are there I don't care But friends will care And just remember what you paid to get in. Connecting flight 235 from Chicago to New York is in the final boarding stages. This is the last call for passengers. That means you and the ugly coat. <laughs> I'm hurrying! <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me. Excuse me. Oh. Oh, I finally did it. I'm taking a vacation without Garfield. Oh. Hello. I guess we'll be seatmates for a while. I'm Rosalind. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm John Arbuckle. I'm heading for New York. I'm going to spend the weekend in the Big Apple. The Big Apple. Good idea. So, John, tell me about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a, a cartoonist and I have a cat named Garfield, but, but I left him at home. Home. He's hundreds of miles away. Just landed at Kennedy International Airport in New York. Please keep your seatbelt fastened until the plane comes to a complete and final stop. Do you know your way around New York, John? Oh, not really. Well, maybe I could show you around. Say, about 8.30? I'll meet you in the lobby of your hotel. I know a really wonderful Italian restaurant near Central Park. Great! Look at all those lights. Ooh, it's 7.45 already. I'd better get dressed. Quick shower and a shave and... Ta -da! <laughs> Garfield? How did you get here? Knowing you, it was probably economy coach. Hey, there's nothing but canned lasagna in this bag. Where's my shaving kit, my socks, my underwear? Well, I had to have room for the electric can opener, didn't I? What's your underwear compared to the possibility of me starving to death? Now listen carefully. I met a beautiful woman on the plane. She likes me, and I'm not going to let you spoil this weekend. You're not to set one foot outside this hotel room. Do you understand? Oh, gee, thanks a lot. First you try to leave me your best friend home, and now you're going to spoil my weekend. You look terrific, Rosalind. Well, are you ready for the best Italian food you've had in your life? This is the ultimate insult. How could John go to an Italian restaurant without me? What have you got on a John Arbuckle? That name sounds familiar. A cartoonist. Okay, he's probably just the mark she met on the plane. Yeah, she'll go for his wallet. Rosalind's the best pickpocket I've ever seen. Pickpocket? 
that woman is a pickpocket? Oh, it figures. What would a woman like her want with a guy like him? <laughs> I have to make sure John isn't alone with her. I was gonna do that anyway. I ordered linguine calamari. What is it? It tastes like spaghetti with squid all over it. Garfield! You leave my friend John alone. If anyone's gonna clean him out of everything he owns, it's gonna be me. Let's get out of here, Rosalind. Wait, you can't leave without me. <laughs> Driver, take us anywhere. I can't let her be alone with him. Sorry about what happened at the restaurant. Oh, that's okay. As long as I'm with you, Johnny. Rosalind, I gotta hand it to you. Oh, don't bother. I'll help myself. You know so many great places to go. I really admire your... <laughs> oh. Garfield! <laughs> what a tough climb. Don't worry, he'll never find us here. There isn't a chance it... Garfield! Will you excuse me, dear? I have to settle something once and for all with my cat. Oh, why certainly, my darling. I'll wait outside. Garfield, how could you? One weekend away from you, one evening! That's all I ask! Whoa, time out. Earth to John. I'm gonna give you money and put you in a cab and send you back to the... That's funny. I was sure my wallet was in... Chance. Did Rosalind take? Rosalind! Come back! Oh, oh, Rosalind! Rosalind! She took! Your wallet? My wallet! I know. I know, too. I'm Feldman, Federal Bureau of Pickpocket Prevention. I've been after her for months. Here's your wallet back. Thanks. For a lovely evening. Bye, Rosalind. Bye, John. Garfield, I'm sorry. You're my best friend. True. I shouldn't have tried going off without you. How can I make it up to you? Well, I have an idea. You know, it would have been cheaper just to let her take the wallet. Hey, I'm an expensive date. <laughs> should have been here last week. Sheldon had quite an adventure. Well, it's a long story. Uh, I guess it all started with this mother turtle out by the lake. Well, she laid an egg and, well, as you know, turtles bury their eggs in the sand to hatch them. Now you be a good little egg and hatch while your mommy is bowling. <laughs> it's the only way to have a kid. Everything would have been fine except that this egg, well, it had other ideas. Oh, I'm going to be buried underground. <coughs> and I don't want to be a turtle either. Hmm, let's see what else there is. What a cute baby. I hope my... my... Now, while that was going on, not far off, Booker and Sheldon were on a worm hunt. Wait till you see the worm trap I set up, Sheldon. You've been doing this for months, Booker. How many have you caught? Well, let's see. Uh, 
Sheldon was wandering through the woods. He's never gonna catch her. There you are, my baby. Uh, I'm not your baby. Now don't say that. You'll always be my baby. Now be a good little turtle. I am not a turtle. <laughs> Look at this. Not even born and already he's lying to his mother. the greatest worm trap ever built. All I have to do is bait this into the rope to catch him. Say, I wonder what worms eat. You catch fish with worms, maybe you catch worms with fish. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Here's a recipe for me. I don't know worms eat Just what Sheldon wanted to do and couldn't. Now you go to sleep, my baby. I am not your baby. I'm a chick. Oh, hush. I'll sing you a lullaby. Puffy pillows made of cotton candy. Fluffy willows swaying in the breeze. Sleep, little baby, grow big and strong. Never have the sniffles, never have to sneeze. Come on. If he thinks he's a chicken, hatch him like a chicken. Meanwhile, back here. Oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> Roy had a new trick, industrial strength sneeze powder. Just about then that Booker returned with what he thought was Sheldon. There he is! The worm! Phew, I made it. I don't have to be that in the making be a turtle. That's what he thought, I guess. He was no less mistaken than Roy. There's Sheldon. Being a turtle's boring. I'm... 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 <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Roy thought this was a funny joke. At least that's what he thought until... Sheldon? Sheldon? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, little turtle. Have you seen Sheldon? Here's a shell, but where's Sheldon? He... He... <gasps> oh, no. Urgh, this place is too strange for me. Sheldon sneezed himself into nothingness. And it's all my fault. They should put warnings on these. I've done a terrible thing. But of course, Sheldon was safe. Well, if you call this safe. But Sheldon had an idea. He fired up his barbecue and cooked burgers. And when it got hot enough... Sheldon ran as fast as his little legs would carry him. Mom! Mom! Baby? My baby? 
baby? <laughs> there you are. You hatched. She recognized him right away. A mother always knows. Mommy. Mommy's here, my dear. Well, that's the story. Oh, wait, I forgot what happened with Roy. I am slime. What I did, I am not fit to eat with pigs. Sorry, Orson. I am no good. I am rotten, my children. I am pond scum. I am worse than pond scum. I am... Hi, Roy. What's going on? Oh, 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 Sheldon, you're alive, not yet born, but alive. Oh, I'm so, so glad to see you, and I promise I will never play another joke on anyone ever as long as I live. Until next week's show. And that's the end of the story. I'm happy to say that everything is back to normal around here. Gesundheit! <laughs> hasn't gone off yet. This is a new kind of alarm clock with a special early detection system for Mondays. It warns me when it's Monday. Ugh, yeah, it's Monday, all right. What could be worse than Monday? Hi, Garfield. What could be worse than Monday, Garfield? Oh, how about Monday with normal around? I learned a new cute trick. Watch. This must stop. Yes, may I help you? Uh, I'm interested in the free kitten. What free kitten? This sign was in your front lawn. Free kitten to anyone, no questions asked. Might even pay you $20 to take it. Garfield! Sorry. Uh, this offer void were prohibited. You can't give Normal away. I know, I've tried. And paying someone $20 to take Normal. You're right. Make it 50 and I'll throw in Odie. I should have let her have you. Either you be nice to Normal or I'm never going to feed you again. I said, either you be nice to Normal or I'm never going to feed you again. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. John. Oh, Marsha. Oh, John. Oh, Marsha. Oh, Marsha. I want to watch cartoons, Garfield, but all that's on are soap operas. Tell me a story. Okay, come sit down. Once upon a time, there was a kitty who was so obnoxiously cute that the handsome prince mailed him to Abu Dhabi and... Garfield! All right, I'll tell you the story of Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there were these two kids who lived in a little cabin. Hansel and Gretel were always very hungry, always eating like pigs. Like you, Garfield? I'll ignore that. Their father was a woodcutter, and there wasn't much wood around to cut. And one day, he said to them, Kids, we're all out of food. Oh. Because, her father said, I'm a woodcutter, and no one wants this woodcutter to cut wood. Gretel had an idea. I have an idea, father. Hansel and I will go find food. Their father liked the idea. Don't come back without a pizza or Chinese food or something. So they headed through the forest. As they walked, they dropped bagels with cream cheese so they could find their way back. Wait a minute. I thought they dropped breadcrumbs. And where'd they get the bagels? <clears throat> they passed a deli. Don't interrupt. So they walked until they couldn't walk anymore. That was when Hansel said, I'm starving. I can't go on. It's been so long since I've eaten. 
How long had it been? About nine minutes. That's when Gretel said, I smell gingerbread. They ran through the forest until they found where the smell was coming from. And there it was, a house made entirely of gingerbread. <laughs> Actually, it was made of sugar, enriched flour, ferrous sulfate, thiamine mononitrate, sodium pyrophosphate, and various artificial colors. But they were hungry enough, it didn't matter. They ate, and they ate, and they ate, and all the time, the witch who lived there watched them eating her out of house and home. She was delighted because she was looking forward to cooking them. And cooking them? That's... Awful. It's just a story like those cartoon shows on TV. Oh, no. They never do things like that on cartoons. Cartoons teach you you should be sweet and nice and always agree with everyone. Yeah, sure. Anyway, so the witch invited him in. She said, Come in, little children, and I will give you a real treat. She took him over to the stove, but Hansel and Gretel knew what she was trying to do, so before she could cook him, they shoved her into the oven and... Stop! Kids shoving old women into ovens? That's awful! Garfield, what are you doing that's got Nermal so upset? Never mind. Whatever it is, stop doing it. That poor little old lady. All right, all right. There must be a way to tidy this story up. I know. So the kids didn't shove her into the oven. Instead, they used her phone. Hansel called the city building commission and said, Hello, I'd like to report a house made out of gingerbread. In seconds, the building inspectors were there. They told the witch, You are in violation of section 17-JW of the city zoning code. This structure is unsafe. They condemned it. It was sold at auction and bought by a guy who was putting up condominiums and mini malls. And that meant a lot of work for woodcutters. Hansel and Gretel's dad not only got work, he got to take home what was left of the house. And the kids ate happily ever after the end. There. Happy? But the poor old witch. Garfield, that wasn't a nice story like the ones they show on Saturday morning. All right, all right. So the witch went into business for herself by franchising a chain of uh, gingerbread daycare centers. Having fun, kids? Hmm, you're a chubby one. <laughs> and she lived happily ever after the end. That was a nice story, Garfield. Gee, it's getting tougher to please kids these days. It's only a story. 